This video is another in a series analyzing production car aerodynamics. Building on part one, it analyzes modifications to the rear of a hatchback model to further increase its performance. With the addition of a spoiler for the GTI version of this car, significant improvements of both lift and drag were made. It reduced drag by 10% and left the car with only 84 newtons of lift. My thinking was that most of the lift came from the rear. I extracted the front and rear force distribution, which gave me negative 21 newtons at the front and 105 newtons at the rear, added together for the mentioned total. From here, a couple of basic changes to remove some of this lift have been made, whilst at the same time trying to keep the drag to a minimum. The simulation setup is the same as last time. We'll be testing three different cases to improve this model's aerodynamic performance. Two specific modifications are implemented with the idea that these specific modifications stem from the previous observation, that the front and rear affect each other through airflow underneath the floor. First is an addition of a gurney flap on the rear spoiler, and second is removing some of the rear bumper. Finally, these two modifications are combined to measure their cumulative effect, completing the set of cases. The base case is the full GTI body kit, but rerun with corrected front wheel rotation axes removing 5 degrees of angle from the surface velocity. A small change is the result and consistent with the increasing speed of the rotation, decreasing drag and increasing lift. The first case, adding the gurney strip to the trailing edge of the rear spoiler. It did what would be expected, increasing the drag to 283 newtons or a CDA of 0.524 and decreasing lift to 52 newtons or another 60%. As indicated by the muddy color, the static pressure increases approaching the spoiler's trailing edge. The air falling off the roof is now slowing rather than speeding up, so thus the air pressure on the surface is increasing. Not only does adding the gurney flap increase the pressure on the spoiler and the roof, but it also increases the size of the weight behind the vehicle. Comparing the total pressure from the car's centerline shows a transition from the undisturbed red air of the free stream to more static air of the wake. This boundary has also been lifted to above the roof line. With the majority of air filling the wake of the car coming from underneath the floor, it increases the mass flow rate underneath the front, meaning that there is a decrease in pressure. Specifically, more air is being accelerated, which is responsible for the pressure decrease. For the second case, the gurney flap is not there and a section of the rear bumper is removed. This resulted in both drag and lift being reduced to 268 newtons or a CDA of 0.496 and 52 newtons respectively. Though the resultant lift is the same as a spoiler with a gurney flap, its characteristics is very different, with a substantial increase in negative lift at the front and a decent amount in the rear. Rather than the volume of the weight increasing, the path that air takes has been effectively smoothed. Again using the total pressure map from the center line, the wake is smaller. The plot shows how the pressure does not build along the length of the floor, better shown in the velocity plot. The principle observed here can be seen in modern cars with the rear bumper shrunk as close to the metalwork underneath as possible. Many bumpers are shaped to give a stylistic impression that the bumper is acting as a diffuser. Of course the bumper can't act like a diffuser because the air is far too turbulent, but because the air is turbulent the bumper would need to be stiffened to remove vibration hence the additional geometry. Finally combining these two modifications. Due to the characteristics of the previous cases acting on separate aspects of the baseline aerodynamics, you could safely assume that they would complement each other. The results bear this out almost exactly. Drag is exactly the same as the baseline at 274 newtons and a CDA of 0.51, but lift is almost eliminated and halved at the rear. The rear axle had 105 newtons of lift before, now it has 48. Adding the differences of the previous two cases, you get a lift value on the rear of 49 newtons. The same can be applied to the front, however drag is not as close. For consistency, the total pressure map is effectively the combination of the previous two cases. Comparing the pressure distribution around the body illustrates the characteristics of each of these modifications. With the aerodynamic characteristics being very close to the cumulative, adding the differences of each of these maps would give you an excellent approximation of the next. For completeness, the streamlines indicate how the air in the wake is structured. There isn't a large amount of structure, more cotton wool than stable vortex. 
The best view is from underneath, where rotating volumes can be seen. Removing some of the rear bumper pulls the air stream close to the center. Smoothing the floor should make any structure that can be seen here more prominent and should become more coherent along with improving both drag and lift.